And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest chit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple. The man, the brains behind the form, the formerly covered Meteor Tales, now returning to the RPG world with Grimstone. The one and only Angelos Kripanios. Hopefully, I got it right this time. Better than before. You have to, you still have a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> with the name. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing today, man? I'm fine. With you. Thank you for having me okay. again. Thank you for coming on. Um, so it's, cer it's certainly been qu it's certainly been quite a while since I had since I had you on la since I had you on last. You're as from what I heard from what I hear, you're running a gaming store in, in Greece these days. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually a bookstore with uh, some old RPGs, uh, retro stuff, and some old uh, console games as well. Mm -hmm. And you know a bit of collectors that a bit of uh, uh, board games. It's it's much fun. It's much fun. Uh, it's it's new and it's fresh. Kind of it's exciting, but it's also a bit uh, exhausting and uh, stressful. But yeah, it's nice. <laughs> so I suppose I should start at the I suppose I should start at the early um, the early stages. When it comes to Grimstone, what gave you the idea to go? to go with a um, musket and pistol era for the, for it and I think I think you also mentioned that dark souls dark souls and bloodborne were influences influences in terms of atmosphere not uh, mechanics or anything like that mm -hmm. uh, it kind of reminded me of some old games uh, the, the ambience and everything like Diablo 1 dark souls castlevania stuff like that but in terms of the, of the the vibes and the feeling, not the actual games or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Grimstone was a, a side project that began when I was wrapping up Meteor Tales. And uh, I wanted to do something in a different timeline. Mm -hmm. And uh, because there's, you know, there's two, two major timelines that I really love. Medieval times and uh, Victorian era kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the steam, you know. And um, so I wanted to do something like that because the Victorian era theme really fits well with vampires and stuff like that. So I wanted to do something specifically dark and uh, low fantasy uh, that that uh, needs to uh, something that is between the lines of old versus the new, alchemy versus science, magic versus science, stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. pistol versus uh, axe and sword. You know, something a uh, paganism versus uh, religion. I I really like these um, dividing lines. Mm -hmm. So I was very inspired to create a new dark world, a different one mm -hmm. that belongs, of course, to the same universe as Meteor Tales. They are they all, you know, everything I create is interconnected. Mm -hmm. And um, so I started developing this. And I, another another thing I wanted to do is create, uh, to be honest, a simpler game than Metro Tales, because I love Metro Tales, but I know it can be uh, complicated mm -hmm. as a game, mechanics-wise. So I created a, a simpler, and because I I become more experienced as well, I can, you know, include uh, many elements, but without making it very uh, uh, crunchy, very, very co complicated. I mean, it's, easy, it's easier and simpler, but without losing a lot on... Uh, Complexity, or not complexity. You know, I like uh, being interested, interesting at the same time. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not. It's not like you said simpler, but not exactly rules light. It, it is light. I mean, I think I managed to compress some things. Mm -hmm. So they are both uh, simple and uh, not empty at the same time. Now I remember. I remember that you had multiple. You had multiple subsystems with uh, Meteor Tales. Yeah. With Grimstone, are you are you intending to comp compress it to a D, to a D ten 
um, based approach as a universal yeah. thing? Yes, I think it works well. I like that die, and I uh, I think it can cover everything I need for Grimstone. I went a different direction. Instead instead of changing dice, I just applied, uh, I don't know how you call it, you add the dice according to your experience. You roll one die, two dice, three dice, etc. Mm -hmm. So it's going up and down. Yeah, yeah, yes. I, I lack on the terms, but yes, that's it. <laughs> so... Um, and uh, so I used this, and uh, it worked really well on Grimstone mm -hmm. because I developed this game focusing on gunfights. So I, I will explain the formula if you like. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. And that particular die worked well. Yeah. Now, I, I did see the video where you went, in, where you went into how, um, how, co how combat works for a bit. Yeah. And... To give to give people a bit of a to give people a bit of a crash course, as I understand it, you you would roll you would roll a set of you would roll a set of d10s based on based on the based on the appropriate attributes, and the difficult the the difficulty is based on the distance. Um, to be accurate, uh, yes, you roll set of dice according to your skill level because it's a classless system mm -hmm. so uh, you can choose from a pool of uh, skills and develop domains uh, the way you like it you can develop uh, advanced weapons traditional weapons magic mm -hmm. and so uh, the more you develop a skill you get more dice to roll uh, and your attributes uh, give you some modifiers in the video because it was a starters video I didn't add any modifiers and stuff um, but uh, yes, the, the concept is that for ranged attacks, especially, you roll the dice and you uh, deduct distance and uh, obstacles as a main. That, that is the main, uh, the most common, let's say, uh, approach. Mm -hmm. And then you can um, you can add some modifiers like uh, the weapons modifier, or if you are on a higher ground. Or if there's fog, darkness, mechanics that alter the result. That's it. Or negatively or positively. Mm -hmm. Now, with with that in with that in mind, since you mentioned a, you mentioned a free form system with the domains, um, yes. is this a is this a point by affair? I think so. Yes, I'm a bit. Um... I, I'm not very good with terms, English terms. So uh, I, I mean, I, I guess what you mean is that you you have a skill tree or something, and you buy abilities from it, right? Not necessarily. What I mean by what I mean by a point-based affair is where it, where um you would spend experience directly to improve attribute skills and um gain abilities, what ha what have you. Oh. Uh... It's uh, not exactly that. You gain experience by practicing or by uh, performing combats. And uh, these experience points give you um, either points to distribute to skills or abilities or feats. But it's a, it's a table um, that uh, you get to unlock these things in a specific order. Mm -hmm. So... Let's say that you every fifty experience every every fifty experience points you get a, a new reward from experience. So the first fifty experience points you get unlock. Let's say the first uh, skill point, and the, then in the next level up, let's say you get a new fit, and then you get something else, and then you get another skill point, and it goes like a cycle or something. Oh, all right, I can I can get that, and. Because because of that setup, it's not. It sounds like it's it's a bit more. It's a bit more tailored, designed for people who want to do gish like approaches of of those who wanted those who might want to do a bit of martial and a bit of magic. Yeah, I mean, you can try to be a bit of you know like a multiple uh, domains, uh, and I I I try to encourage that. Uh, through the game, I mean, of course, focused characters are always, you know, determined and more uh, skillful in particular fields. But uh, 
you know, when you mix uh, some things up, it becomes more interesting. And uh, the era of the game and um, the timeline and the way the system is set up kind of inspires the multi, let's say, multi-classing. It's not classes, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Now, earlier on, you talked you talked about a lot of a lot of opposing I- opposing ideas and opposing ideals within the th- within the theme of Grimstone. Is that something that carries over into uh, into the mecha- into the mechanics? Like there are cer- like there are certain domains that if you pick them, you might um, have a harder time picking their opposite. Yeah, thank you for asking that. It's, uh, it's a beautiful question, actually. Um, what I did uh, in Grimstone, I the first uh, few books, uh, the first few pages of the book, um, will introduce you to some basic lore. And uh, within that lore, you can um, there's also a calendar that uh, because the the main concept of Grimstone is moon versus the sun, mm-hmm. and there are and there are moon born tribes and sun born tribes, uh, and it's a uh, it's something that goes back to the creation of the world and the two gods, the goddess of the moon and the god of the sun. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, of course, this, uh, they created the tribes and these tribes are now mixed. So they're, they're both mixed. Their blood is not pure, let's say. Mm-hmm. So there's, uh, there's no pure bridge anymore. But uh, according to their bloodline, uh, their abilities are affected. So, for example... Uh, moonborn tribes are mo- uh, have a proximity to uh, magic, where sunborn tribes uh, do not contain any magic anymore. So they're not attuned to magic, let's say. So there's a natural conflict between them. And um, you get abilities that sync with the phases of the moon. So, for example, let's say you, you are a werewolf because... There are six tribes, and, be, and among these tribes there are werewolves and vampires, and they're all considered humanity. Mm-hmm. So, let's say you're a werewolf. Instead of transforming into the werewolf, let's say, once per day, which is a very gamey mechanic I don't really like, uh, in Grimstone you can transform into a werewolf, let's say, when the moon is on uh, that phase or this phase and that phase, which happens on that particular day, in this particular day. So you have a calendar and you know when you can tr- transform or use that ability mm-hmm. because it's connected with a lunar phase and I really love that idea because I like to connect lore and mechanics in one thing. Mm-hmm. Now, with that with that in mind, I would like to sp- I would like to touch on ma- magic to an extent. All right. Because Back with back with Meteor Tales, you certain you had a unique approach when it came to han- handling ma- handling your magic system. And given the given that um, that light versus darkness um, theme that we've talked about throughout this, I'm curious how you how you would be handling um, Matt how you'd be handling magic and technology to make them distinct from each other. Okay. So, yes, there is uh, this notion that uh, magic is against technology and vice versa. Mm-hmm. And uh, this, goes, uh, um, this is explained through the book uh, and through the history of the world as well. It's connected. So, as we said, magic uh, belongs to the side of the moon. So, um, um, because Grimstone is... Uh, low fantasy and a bit of low magic. It's not as meter tales. So there's limited access to spells. So how it works. Um, characters that use magic, that choose magic, they get to develop um, basic forms of magic. Forms meaning uh, bolt, barrier, glamour, and utility. These are four basic forms that you can use. And then you get grimoires in-game that help you mask these forms and uh, and alter them. For example, a starting spellcaster, um, let's say, uh, will cast a raw, a raw bolt spell. This is invisible energy, pure form, uh, invisible. Okay, so it's uh, the simplest form of magic. So you cast a bolt and you inflict physical pain 
to another person. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, and then uh, in game you um, you find the grimoire of uh, fire. So acquiring this book will allow you to mask uh, your bolt and uh, convert it into a fire bolt. Mm-hmm. And in the same sense, your barrier becomes a flame barrier with the uh, default attributes. And uh, glamour effects, and I mean, every spell is masked according to your grimoire. So you get different grimoires that alter the spells and uh, produce different effects. Magic is, a, again, a subject to uh, physics like weapons. Mm-hmm. They are affected by distance and obstacles because they're like projectiles, most of them, apart uh, except for uh, some forms of magic. And they increase toxicity in the blood. They, um, they, if they are overused, they will poison the caster and they will be forced to rest and uh, reduce toxicity or suffer very severe side effects. Mm-hmm. And with, within the, within the, within the um, side effects that you mentioned, I'm, get, I'm guessing that this is not too far removed from the way, say, wild magic works in, in some games. I guess, I guess not. Uh, although Grimstone, just like Mr. Tails, is very little the system, so each character cannot tolerate much. So when I mean side effects, I mean really side effects. I mean, yes, you can you can cast a spell and like fall unconscious, and that is considered a light side effect. But you can also cast a spell with high toxicity and uh, suffer uh, an injury or even uh, something worse. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, that does not happen with a single spell or two spells or, th- or something. It depends on the amount of spells cast during the day, and, and of course, it depends on the power of the spell. The higher the power of the spell, the higher the toxicity reason. Mm-hmm. So, with the with that in mind, um, when it comes to when it comes to te- when it comes to techno when it comes to um firearms since i i know that that's one of the things that you bi- that you built a bit more around and this is off this is often something i end up asking whenever whenever um whenever whenever any sort of any sort of pistol like tech ends up getting in- ends up getting introduced um how do you balance them in how do you balance them so that it's mechanically distinct from uh, melee combat well, the first thing to keep in mind is that uh, bullets and knives can uh, kill you just like it's the same thing, more or less. I mean, they, they are as little, both of them. So the only thing that changes really is distance. Okay? So um, guns uh, of that particular age, um, first of all, they need time to reload, most of them. So that kind of balances out the whole thing. I mean, the whole concept of Greenstone is that people interact, uh, engage in combat, they fire a couple of shots, and then they're more likely to drop their guns and switch to melee weapons. Um, so, yes, it's like historic um, historic times in our world uh, at that particular era, like uh, um, when people used to use these kind of weapons that were... Um, not exactly unreliable, but uh, it's not like modern fire- firearms. Mm-hmm. They had a very high possibility of uh, misfiring, uh, jamming. Uh, I don't know how you call it exactly in English, but um, you in know, general. you would, fire, yeah, you would fire a couple of shots. You had to clean them. You had to reload them. It's like a crossbow, more or less. Anyways, so yeah, you use the guns, and um, what I did in Grimstone is that I. That again connects with the law. So the closer you are to the more uh, to the uh, developed uh, kingdoms of the world, the empire, um, the better quality of guns you can get, of course. So, I mean, if you live um, in the countryside, let's say, or uh, remote uh, societies or underdeveloped societies, you get to fight with, of course, old weapons and stuff. But if, if we're talking about guns, uh, you get to fight with uh, all the older pistols and, and um, less reliable weapons, but if you get closer to the better uh, stuff, 
You can even get revolvers and guns that have multiple shots and they are less likely to jump. So yes, this pro these guns become very powerful in combat. And that's why you have to play with uh, stealth, you have to play with obstacles, you have to take cover, you have to approach, uh, you have to use a different approach when you use melee combat, solely melee combat, uh, because in reality it would be very difficult to approach uh, a gunfighter, let's say, and when you are using just a sword. So, yeah, you, uh, we're not uh, holding our punches back uh, in this particular case. You have to be either very stealthy, very smart, mm. or have a variety of weapons on you. Oh, yeah, and I, I can certainly get I can certainly get behind that. Um, now with that with that kind of thing with that kind of thing in mind, the. I suppose I suppose I suppose one one of the big thing one of the big things I should bring up is that within the set within the setting it make it it seems to make a bit of a deal of the discovery of the titular brimstone and I'm curious how bi how big of a deal that how big of a deal the implementation of that discovery is on the uh, setting well the discovery of this uh, brimstone signifies um, introduc introduces um, firearms into the world. Mm -hmm. It's like gunpowder. Okay, so um, lore-wise, it was the greatest discovery of the largest empire of the world mm -hmm. that made them that, that made that made them the definitive dominating force. Let's say uh, so. They took advantage of the crimson and they produced firearms, and um, so it was. Also, the turning point, uh, let's say, when the world turned to science and uh, left behind the pagan ways, the ways of old, the ways of the moonborn tribes, the ways of the moon in general, magic, alchemy, and the old stuff as well. So, the the world is the current timeline of the world is on the turning on this turning point. Well, it's a bit past this turning point, where. Um, you know, the old ways, magic and the rituals and everything is considered paganism and a bit of taboo mm -hmm. and a bit of the old ways, which is not uh, persecuted, but frowned upon greatly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the, the religious of the sun has been established, science has been established, uh, medicine has been established, and the uh, alchemy... And the magic and the old weapons have been left behind, but of course, uh, that is the whole magic of the game, the atmosphere of the game. Depending on the story you play, you can be on either side. Mm -hmm. And with now, what are you shooting for as far as the total page count with the project? Well, it's a small book. Uh, I managed to uh, keep it simple and plain. Uh, so it's 125 pages, mm -hmm. easy to set up, easy to play. And uh, the reason I did that is because I wanted to make a different book of uh, monsters this time. And uh, because there's not many monsters in the world, it's more like spirits and some creatures of the, of the moon and some creatures of the sun again. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I wanted to make different supplement books. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and expansions, of course, because it's a classless system and... Uh, and possibilities are endless. You can add as many skills you like and as many domains you, you you like. It's very easy. And I wanted to help people create their own stuff as well, of course, And uh, because it's very easy. It's very easy to come up with uh, extra abilities and extra spells and everything. So I provide the players with the basic stuff, mm -hmm. which is a lot of stuff. This is a lot of stuff. And uh, they can uh, improvise and create their own Easily. Mm -hmm. so, so, with and as a bit of as a bit of a capstone, what would you be shooting for as far as a release window? I know, I know, there's still 27 days to go on the Kickstarter itself. Yeah, and then I believe um, I'll be able to have everything ready by then, and uh, uh, because I uh, mentioned in the Kickstarter that um, the estimate. The delivery dates, the estimates are March to April, and I'm pretty confident I can fulfill that. Mm -hmm. 
uh, yeah, so I think we're good to go. I mean, uh, I I feel confident that I can uh, have everything set up because everything is uh, prepared properly. And I had this project, I worked on this for a long time. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I feel good about this. Yeah, and uh, I, will cer I will certainly be looking forward to seeing how it develops. But with all, with all of that... With all of that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness at play here. Thank you very much. And really enjoy your conversations. And anytime you see fit to return to the temple, the door is always open. As I often thank say you. around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Yep. And, uh, you will be receiving uh, your copy of Grimstone. You know that, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. So, so uh, I will be sending you a copy uh, as a thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I certainly appreciate. I certainly appreciate that. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty, everybody! <laughs>